The time is here. Let us start the 3ds Max tutorials. Um, have a look at the setup. We have, we have the desk. We have lights all set up for you guys. I, I wouldn't want you guys to suffer through 3ds Max tutorials without proper, proper lighting and some enjoyable stuff. The first section of this, I'm going to go through what we're going to do and kind of show you guys entirety so you can see the end goal that we're working towards. Because I know that the first tutorials are going to be very monotonous in that they constantly are, uh, it's, 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 you know, it's learning how to create an object, learning how to put a material on something like this. You won't really see what, what we're working towards until we get there. So I wanted to first kind of go through and blaze through it. So don't expect everything to be explained right now. I'll be getting through it and going through it with kind of a fine tooth comb later on. But right now I'm going to kind of give you an overall look at the complete process from going from a, a still image to getting a 3D object into that still image that has proper shadows casting onto the environment as well as light reflecting and getting set up because that's really like the building block of it. Most tutorials will tell you to start with creating objects and more basic stuff. This is going to start off right with pretty much we're trying to get to this point because once you're at the point where you can create an object and put it inside of a 3D environment, that's where it starts to get really fun. Because at that point, once you can do that right, you can start putting anything you want in there. You can download models off the internet, you just retexture, and it's really up to your creativity of what to do. So I don't expect this to be perfect, but I do know that I'm 100% I'm self-taught in 3ds Max. So hopefully, if I kind of walk you guys through what I did to learn, uh, you, can, you can follow the same steps, and hopefully I can help you avoid some of the pitfalls of uh, 3ds Max. So I'll be using 3ds Max 2012 today, as well as V-Ray. Um, for rendering, V-Ray is a is a uh, is a is the is basically we'll we'll get into renderers later. I'm not going to tell you. We're rendering with V-Ray. Let's start with uh, life as a staircase. Uh, that's that's uh, important. <laughs> Actually, it's complete bullshit. Let's open up 3ds Max. So this is 3ds Max. We got our viewports. There we got the perspective viewport. We have the front viewport, top viewport, left viewport. Uh, basically, most of the time you'll be in this view. But we're going to be working with two assets today. We have this image, which is a background image that we use for this is the shot where the tub spawned in. Today I'm just going to be putting two balls into it. And uh, we have a spherical environment map. First thing, so let's get our 3ds Max set up. Hit F10. We have right here, this is basically our renderer setup. Okay. So we're going to check our renderer. Renderer assigned, we are in V-Ray. We render with V-Ray. After that, resolution, kind of want to set this. You want to get into the habit of setting this stuff up right away in every scene so you don't start building stuff and have to adjust later and realign things. And so basically we'll be rendering in HDTV. And to make this render nice fast for you guys, since I'm working in 720p, super low resolution. Got that set up. Cool. Now switch our uh, viewports here to turn on safe frame. What safe frame does is it makes it so, you see how it brought the box in there? It basically makes it so your viewport is locked to that correct perspective. And the first thing to doing any CG object in the shot is we're going to line a camera. So hit Alt-B. And that brings up viewport background. Viewport background is to let me click check display background uh, file, and I'm going to pull up that shot basically, the O to G mod reference shot. Hit OK. So we got our background loaded up there. Make sure we click display background to view it. Now hit Control C, and what Control C, as you can see in the other viewports, is it created a camera. It creates a camera from whatever your view is. So the goal of what we're doing right now is to line this 3D camera up so that it fits in the space with the uh, with basically the perspective. So now when I shot this, I remembered that I was exactly probably about 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 a quarter of a meter off the ground. The camera is about this far off, and so I have some hints for aligning this camera. I'm going to move it down so it's about that distance from the ground. And a few tips for aligning your camera is basically you always want to turn on show horizon. This black line back there, that's that's the horizon. So we want to line it up with approximately where it would be if it's going into infinity. And then I'm going to select the entire camera and move it around so that that lines up right about where my objects are going to be, which are in the foreground. Create geosphere, and this is, we're going to create our first object here, guys. If you're, not, if you're finding yourself falling behind already, which I know you are because I'm going through this really fast, and if, you have, if you have zero experience, um, don't worry. Once again, we're going to get very in-depth. We're going to get all this done right, and this is basically just showing you guys where, what we're working towards so you kind of can see the pieces as it builds. Make this ball. Um, 0.2 meter, meter radius, so that's about 0.4 across here. Let's make it 0.25 meter radius. Yeah, there we go. Good enough. So now it's a half meter across. So that ball is about this big. It's about a beach ball. One really important thing in 3ds Max to get in the habit of is even when it's not necessary for the shot you're doing is you always build everything to scale. The tricky thing about 3D programs is that you can actually, based on where I position this camera, I can make this, I can make this ball look about as big as, or as small as I want. Since you don't have any perspective, now this ball looks, you know, looks tiny. It looks, about the size of his, it looks about the size of his shoe. And once I get all the way up in here, now it can look, it can look really big. 
And so knowing that that ball is approximately what size we want to make it and positioning it right for that is going to be a total lifesaver. And two pink balls sitting right there. And you're going to see the importance of these balls in just a second. Create one more object here. We need to create a box because basically we need a ground plane. Eventually what we're going to do here is we're going to tell 3ds Max that our ground plane is the actual ground in the scene and we're going to use that for shadows and for bouncing light off basically. I can hit render, which I'll show even though I know this is going to be no good. Boom, right there. We have two balls and we got the pink right there. What we're going to do is create a light and that light, since we're using V-Ray, is going to be a V-Ray sun. Even though there's no sun in this day, you'll see, where, you'll see where we're getting at here. Close that up. And position. Position that sun so it's cascading down. Remembering once again from the day we shot about what angle the sun was com would have been coming in with if it wasn't uh, overcast. Moving this light up right there. So that, right, you can see how the viewport adjusts to be, to be accurate for that. Now you think, oh, we're going to hit render, it's going to be perfect. <laughs> no, no. This is a 3D program. Nothing's ever perfect when you just start. It needs a lot more work and a lot more memory to get there. So basically, the first thing we're going to do is turn on a exposure control. Exposure control is going to teach us, is basically, not teach us, exposure control is going to, is, is, is affecting how the computer calculates the light. It's, it's how it's interpolating what it's seeing. Render again. Okay, we dialed our exposure in a little bit more still looks like a piece of crap. Let's start to get some materials in here so you can see what it looks like when there's no material and you can see what it's like after we kind of build, after we build up the environment around it so you can see how much better our materials look after that. We hit M to open up our material window. We create two materials, both V-Ray materials. V-Ray, the first one is gonna be, since it's chrome, we're turning the reflection up to 100%. We're making, basically making something that'd be impossible in real life, which is a 100% mirror, absolutely perfect. Reflect up to 100% and then we need to apply that. Let's make this a little smaller apply that to our chrome ball and then we take our second material material v-ray v-ray material and apply that one to our non-chrome ball there so now we got a chrome ball and we have a non-chrome ball since it's an overcast day i'm gonna make the intensity multiplier like 0.05 so it's like 1 20th of the normal intensity size multiplier then make it like 30 so it's this huge sun so basically it's gonna make it very diffused very very blank shadows, very like almost like the sun's not even there. We just have a tiny bit of directional light. It, the model we're doing is overcast. It's not even overcast sky. Oh yeah, it's looking overcast, looking real good, real hot. That's what we want. And so for our ground, we're going to create a material that is a V-ray material right there. That V-ray material is going to be applied to the ground. I can just just catch a peek of it over there, so put that right on the ground, boom, it's on the ground. And now, feeding into this V-Ray material, we need a very old archaic map, which is basically some map, it's camera map per pixels. Take that camera map, specify a camera, which we can snag a peek of right there. That camera is this one right here, so that's camera one. Make this so it's going to feed into the diffuse, diffuse channel. And then for the texture, we're going to be putting a bitmap into there. And that bitmap is going to be our background picture again. Make sure that's set to texture environment. Perfect. And it's right here. Now you see that that basically on the bottom of our render, we have where that object is, we have the ground, and it's reflecting back onto our mirrored surface. Good. Step in the right direction. Hit A to pull up our environment map. So our environment map, we're actually going to be not putting the V-Ray sky there. We're going to override that so that the background for lighting we're basically gonna give it different information for the environment for lighting it's gonna be the v-ray sky which is cancel that for lighting it's gonna be the v-ray sky which is over there boom instance cool for reflections we're gonna put in a different thing we're gonna put in a bitmap and that bitmap this is where our spherical environment is pull that over into our material editor open that up and make sure that's environment and spherical environment. So I'm basically telling it that this is a this texture is is not just a flat texture, but it is something that's spherical around the entire scene. So now you see the reflection. We now have the reflection of the sky there. It's very it's very dark, but it is there. And now finally for the background, we get our old man back in there, doing a bitmap. And that bitmap is once again the background, 
And that, if we go into the material editor, so you notice we're stacking up materials here left and right. Put that into the background, into the material editor, and make sure that one is environment screen. So that's basically defining that the, the coordinates of the corners of the screen where the camera is, that's what's defining where that image is. So if we hit render, you should see, boom, we now have the old man in there. We have the, for the background, we've got the ground, and we also have the ball in there with the reflections from the environment, so not just from the background, but also from the whole screen around there. Now let's dial this in so it actually looks a little more proper. First thing we need to do, indirect illumination. On. That's good. We want indirect illumination. In the real world, there's light not just doesn't just come from the sources, it bounces around, so we turn on indirect illumination. Hit render again. Oh, starting to look a lot better, isn't it? Right there, we have the ground reflecting. That's the probably around light. Now we just need this background it is getting affected right now by 3ds Max making it darker. So we're going to tell 3ds Max, don't make it darker. We actually want you to, let's see here, indirect illumination. Nope, V-Ray. And environment, no. Color mapping, perfect. Effect background, no. So now the background's not being affected. So our background is coming through just as it was in the regular image. The ground's coming through just as it was in the regular image. It's bouncing off the bottom there. The only thing that's missing right now is our background is dark. We need to walk that in. And so the beauty is, now that we have this how our original image was, we can right click on that and see that it's sitting at about, oh, about 75 to 78% luminance. And we can look at the reflection on this guy. That should be the same since we have 100% bouncing back and forth. And right now it's sitting about 10%. Find my, find my 3D environment. I leave that right there. Go down to it and adjust the output to bring it up. Oh, 114 there. Boom. So, as you can see right now, what we've got going on is we have, we've basically, we've set up the camera to be the appropriate to match this shot. Now this shot, when I shot it, I just use a still image right now. However, with the shot, it was all shot from the same angle, so I don't actually need it to animate and move in the background right now. It doesn't have to actually be a motion file for me to render out a, a video onto it. So this is, this is how we set up basically this scene for the bathtub dropping in. So now, once I've got it dialed in here, I've got, the, I've got the black, I've got, I've got the gray ball, the 50% gray ball looking appropriate in the environment. You can see the little bit of light on it coming from the direction of the sun. You can see the kind of the blue from the sky from the back. You can see the shadows from the ground beneath it. Um, the mirror ball, you can see the reflections from 360 degrees. You can see it from the ground, you can see it from there. They're not, they're not perfect right now because I didn't do the mirror ball from, I didn't do the, uh, the spherical environment from that spot, but it doesn't matter because I'm not planning on putting anything in the scene that's actually that reflective. And so it just has to be pretty close. Before you try to learn, you know, just, just about anything else in 3ds Max, you need to know how to put it into this, this, final, this final scene setting so that you can figure it out, um, so that you can actually know what you're looking at. Because so often we see people try to, do, try to do a chrome material or like a gold material, something that's really defined by its reflections. When can you ever see gold in real life without it reflecting something? When can you ever see a mirror in real life without it reflecting something? So it's impossible to get it looking right in 3D unless you have that environment. Once we have everything dialed in, we have our scene built and so that the, so the light is working properly, the reflections are working properly, and now we can basically put anything we want in this scene. Boom, there's a box sitting there right in the scene. Notice how, notice how it's actually reflecting off the other ball and everything, everything's in there, everything's in the environment properly. So once you've built the scene correctly, you can put stuff in there wherever you want, it's all lit right, the shadows are coming to the environment and it's right there. So, Kind of wanted to show you guys basically where we're going to be getting. We're going to get here um, over the next over the next uh, few months. Basically, I'll start taking off bite size. If I assume this one was was went pretty fast and was kind of over your head, that's okay. Now you know where we're working towards. We're going to break the whole thing down. Um, so next one, basically, I'll start with uh, going through just kind of the basics of looking around the viewport, navigating, and going. And this this is actually pretty long. We'll keep it we'll keep it short, and each one's going to kind of have like. Basically, I expect you guys to go through and try it. So don't just watch it. You're not going to learn it that way. You have to get 3ds Max installed and take it the whole way out and try to learn it. And so, hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know via Twitter if you have any questions, comments about the format, uh, stuff in particular you hope that I cover and get to someday. We'll get to the boring stuff now, but soon we'll get to some really fun stuff like fire and dynamics and physics. It'll be it'll be a lot of fun.